Hey y'all, <laughs> welcome to my cozy catty corner of the internet. So in this week's uh, chaos, I was in the middle of prepping my footage and editing next week's video. And while I was doing that, I realized I had a clip that wrapped up my thoughts and opinions about every single video from this week's reading vlog. And I thought it might be a little fun to have this video for you guys this week because I didn't really have anything else planned for my second video this week. So fun little a bonus, bonus video this week. And so just as a reminder, reading vlogs do contain spoilers and this will heavily contain spoilers because I'm literally going through the process of explaining my thoughts, opinions, and the synopsis, storyline, everything about the books in this video. So as always, for all of my reading vlogs, if y'all ever hear me starting to talk about a book that you're like, no, 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 I want to hear nothing about it. I do have the books listed down in the chapters below. So just use the little chapter feature to skip to a book you might not care about hearing spoilers about. But with that noted, let's talk about the books that are gonna be in this vlog, vlog video. It's not really a vlog, it's just a video. We have And There He Kept Her, Snow Globe Makes an Appearance, None of This Is True, Six of Crows, and a book that was not in this week's vlog but was supposed to be in this week's vlog was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. So a little bonus book for you guys if you're watching Thursday's video. Let's hop to past Kayla and see what she has to say about all these books. Okay, y'all, we are wrapping up this week's reading vlog. I just want to know if you can hear like little crunching, chewing noises. It's because Echo is literally sitting right here, uh, chomping away on one of her toys. So just a forewarning, if you're wearing headphones, you'll probably hear it aggressively uh, versus if you're not wearing headphones, like yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but just a heads up. So we actually have a decent stack of books to talk about. I'm like really excited about this. So first and foremost, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I had included this in last week's reading vlog and I ended that reading vlog being like, hey guys, if you want to know my thoughts and opinions, go watch next week. Well, it's next week. And I realized I like didn't talk about this at all. I'm obsessed with this book. Literally, as soon as I finished it, I ordered the second one right away. I'm just, this was so fun. The thing with me, especially when there's multi-characters, multi-perspectives, we didn't get Wumblebee's perspective a lot in this book, but when we did, I enjoyed it thoroughly. And where I was going with that was that like oftentimes, like I kind of gravitate towards one character over the other, but I loved Emily. I thought she was so, it's a character type you don't get a lot in books and especially in fantasy books. Everyone says she's like a grumpy, you know, curmudgeon. I think she's just like very particular in her ways, a little like socially awkward, but like, who is it nowadays? <laughs> I find like Emily was so relatable and Wumblebee was just like, I don't know, he's such a cutie patootie. I loved him. I love both of them. So I'm really excited to start Map of the Other Lens, but I have quite a stack of books that I am tackling before we get to Map of the Other Lens. But just like, I love this book. Five stars, 10 out of 10 recommend. It was so fun. And I think it approached the fae and fairy realm in like this perfect way. And I'm very intrigued to see how how they continue going on about their adventures in the second book. I think I briefly mentioned Snow Globe in last week's vlog and I had the same in this week's vlog. I did start Snow Globe. I'm about 50 pages in and I just haven't really gotten back to it. Not saying that it's a bad book, but I don't know. I was just like, I had other books that I wanted to read that were just like calling my name. They were like, Kayla, Kayla. And I was like, yes. So I'm sure I will eventually get back to Snow Globe. It wasn't pulling me along. And I'm the type of person where if like a book isn't pulling me along, if I'm not just like, oh yes, I need to read this, I'm gonna set it down. I think I just need to get further into the book to really decide like, do I like this book or not? But so far, it's an all right book. There are points where I'm like, oh, this is a young adult book because it's really written like a young adult book. And that's not like a bad thing. It's supposed to be a young adult book, but sometimes young adults just read too young adult. You know what I mean? But then there's other times where it's just like, 
I don't know, it's just this weird duality of like times where I'm like, I'm really getting involved in the book. And then all of a sudden, like one sentence will just throw that off. And I'm like, oh yes, this is a child's book. <laughs> so I just, I keep going back and forth on this one, but maybe this will be in next week's. I'm not sure. I just have so many other books I really want to tackle that this unfortunately has kind of like sunk to the bottom of my priority list. Next, speaking of YA, Six of Crows. We all know I had, I literally had a moment in this video where I was like, I think I'm gonna DNF it. I think I'm gonna DNF it. And I'm so glad I did not DNF it. It was quite honestly, the only part that was like pulling me out was freaking Inej's narrator and how Inej's narrator did Kaz's dialogue made him sound like a little rug rat. I'll have to like include a clip. Here's a clip of what Kaz sounds like. Of course he is, said Kaz. His voice had the rough abraded texture of stone against stone because this is the way Per Haskell wants it. A rug rat. I just, I don't know how to explain it any better. So I did order Crooked Kingdom that is on its way. I ordered it on Pango Book, so it takes a little longer than like if I bought it on Amazon. And I'm heavily debating if I want to listen to the audiobook for Crooked Kingdom because Kingdom, it's the same narrators. And if I have to deal with another book of a Nege making Kaz sound like a fucking rug rat, I don't know if I can do that. I honestly don't know if I can do that. I feel like it just moved at a pace that like it never got boring. It never got dull. And I find that sometimes a lot of like fantasy adventure style books, they can have like a lull or a leg in it where you're like, I just want to continue with the adventure and all that stuff. And this, I never felt like I was just like, this is dragging on, you know? and the twist at the end i don't know if necessarily know if it's a twist but how they go to oh my god i don't even remember his name pekka so pekka rollins is pretty much the reason kaz's brother is no longer on this planet like it's not necessarily that it was pekka's complete fault that his brother passed away from i think it was like some sort of plague type situation but pekka stole all of their money and they had like a decent life funds because their father had passed away and so they pretty much just got like obviously whatever was left of his finances and Pekka just stole all of it and so Kaz has like this vendetta against Pekka and so the fact that he like went to Pekka for like help to cause mayhem in the world i am so bad i don't remember like all the side characters names i just remember the main characters names oh vanek okay yeah so vanek pretty much just screwed them over they went on this crazy mission like people almost died multiple times and then vanek is like oh that you think you're actually getting that money i promised you no um so he screwed them over and now kaz and his crew are you know gonna go fuck shit up with uh Van Eck, but they went to Pekka for help and we'll see what happens in Crooked Kingdom. Next was And There He Kept Her. This is a book I will I'm eventually gonna go back to. We'll see. But I just really hated that we had the antagonist, bad guy, Emmett's um point of view. I really hated that. I wish we had it. As I noted earlier, I wish it was like more of a third party, third party. I wish it was a third person perspective that we were getting his chapters in and not first person because it just, it's this weird duality of like feeling sympathetic for him at times, but then also being like, oh no, this man literally like kidnapped a woman and killed her, potentially multiple women. So it was just like, I don't know. I wasn't liking it, um, but I was really enjoying Packard's storyline, which is why I was like, man, I wish I could keep reading this, but I just, every time we were sitting with Emmett, I was just like, oh, can next, can we flip to the next, you know? So I may eventually return to this, but if you are the type of person who just doesn't care for like the serial killer's point of view, like I wouldn't recommend it because it does have his point of view in it, unfortunately. <laughs> None of this is true by Lisa Jewell. This was such a good read. I was literally like, what happens next? What happens next? 
where is he what happened this was such a good read so we have alex who's a podcaster we have josie who's just like a typical housewife or so that's what is alluded to at the beginning i would say all throughout the first half of the book you really do like build this sympathy and trust for josie you're starting to like learn her story through these podcast tellings but the thing is like throughout like the entire book there's snippets of the netflix documentary that's being made based off of alex's podcast so you know that things aren't Go going well you're like getting these snippets of like oh no like Josie something happens something's going on here Josie and her husband major age gap met when she was literally a child so we don't love Walter for that Walter's her husband and then we have Alex whose husband is Nathaniel Nathan Nate I can't remember his one and her husband like used to apparently when they were younger go on benders a lot once they had their kids he stopped doing that but then all of a sudden recently he's been starting to go on benders a lot lately and Josie's like oh well like he's the worst person ever because like he has obviously an addiction problem Alex has never assumed that there's any been any sort of like cheating or anything like that she's just like no that he just has like this problem but Josie's very much on the side of like oh no he's probably out there cheating with all these women and it gets to this one point literally halfway through the book where Walter and Josie are going over to Alex and Nathan's house to like have a dinner. Nathan is like I'm just gonna go have a drink with my pals after work and then I swear I will be home by seven o'clock. Uh, seven o'clock rolls around and he's not there. Josie starts like doing like, oh, like, oh, where's your husband? He's probably, she just starts making all these, like the worst comments ever about Nathan, a man she's never met. Yes, are, is he, does he have like, you know, a drinking and drug problem? Absolutely. But like, that's, who, who are you? Who are you to just, uh, I don't know. It just really rubbed me the wrong way about how she was like approaching it and being so matter of fact with Alex. I'm like, you don't really know this woman. Like you literally met her two weeks ago and you're just sitting here completely judging her life. And I don't know, like that chapter where Josie's just like, oh, well, he's no good, you know, it's disgust. This is disgusting. I heard him on the other end of the phone call. He was slurring all, that's disgust. I'm just like, miss ma'am. And from that moment on, I hated Josie. I hated Josie. Anyways, so all of this starts happening. She, Josie ends up killing Walter. She has two children, Roxy and Aaron. Roxy had pretty much ran away from home when she was in her late teens. Aaron has been living with them and she's like a gamer on glitch. And this is when you start to actually really love Walter. Yes, he obviously made some really bad choices in his past because he married a teenager. But like how he interacts with like his children, it was so sweet because Aaron's a gamer on Glitch. Her name was erased and Walter started making appearances in her streams and it was erased in pops. And I'm just like, that's so cute, that's so cute. But yeah, like fucking Josie just goes off killing everyone. And there's another subplot, I'm not gonna get into it, but at the end of the book, or pretty much damn near the end of the book. Alex just has this monologue because, oh, Josie also killed Nathan. But Alex has this monologue and pretty much says that Josie's just like this basic bitch. Like you're just a basic bitch. And Josie's on the run at this point too. Like no one ever finds her. The audience is under the assumption that everything Josie has ever said, like none of this is true. And, but, uh, but then we get the last three pages from Josie's perspective and it's like her off in the world living her life and she's still just like infatuated with Alex and just being like oh everyone lied about me like you just never understood my story I was trying to tell you my story but you never understood and she pretty much alludes to the fact that Aaron and Roxy were lying to you, like Walter wasn't a great person, he was being abusive towards his children, he was abusive towards me. Um, so it just like twists your perspective and you're like, wait, like who's telling the truth? Are the girls telling the truth? 
is Josie telling the truth? I'm sorry if this isn't, isn't making any sense. Um, but then Roxy and Aaron were both on the same page of like, no, this is how her mother really was. Like this, this person she was trying to sell you isn't who she is. And then even um, Josie's mom was on the same page of like, no, Walter was an absolutely loving father. She's like, he may have not have been the greatest husband, but he loved his children so much. They had such a great connection and bond. Um, and yeah, it was just like, there's so many stories being like, this is this story, you know? And then there was just Josie on her own little island. It's like, okay, I might believe Josie a little more if there weren't so many stories over here all correlating and like connecting and intertwining, you know? So <sighs> that was none of this is true. Anywho, so if you guys want a sneak peek at next week, we have, House with Good Bones, I literally just started this last night and by just started, I read page one and then I was like, I'm sleepy. <laughs> so I went to bed. And I also have to read this next week or pretty much this weekend, Abby Jimenez's Just for the Summer. I found this at my library and it's only a seven day checkout. So I'm very excited to delve into this. So if you wanna see my thoughts and opinions on House with Good Bones, and just for the summer and maybe some other books. I will see you guys in next week's reading vlog. Mm -hmm.